Hey guys, it's Dom from mobiledom.co.uk and uh, this video is kind of a late one. I mean, not late as in the sense because this build came out today, but um, late as in the fact that I'm shooting this at midnight. Um, today, I've got an updated video of one I did a couple weeks ago. Well, I actually shot it in Feb. doesn't matter. This is Ubuntu Touch Developer Preview, a newer build. Alright, so you heard me say this is a newer build. Now they're doing like daily builds of Ubuntu Touch. And you can just see how smooth this is. It's crazy. I mean, this is like. It's still so. It's just great. I mean, I'm. I am genuinely speechless. I love this. It's. This is what we need. We need more of this in... <laughs> we just need more of this, more innovation, like genuine innovation. Stuff that's like, oh wow, I didn't think of this. Um, so as I said, this build came out today. Um, it's the 14th of June. Or that technically it's like a minute into the 15th of June. But still, um, <laughs> this build came out on the 14th of June. And I'm just gobsmacked at how far they've come in a couple months. It's just, they've now got um, uh, messages and calls and 3G working and oh, it's just crazy. I mean, and this, the um, I don't know if you saw it, but when I turn it off, the welcome screen actually animates. So, oh, it didn't this time. But, um, you can actually change it, so if you double tap, so there you go, now it says 33 messages. It'll say like 52 kilometers or something like that. And it'll go back to like 60, 69 minutes of talk time remaining. So those are like the preset ones at the moment, but obviously when the OS is finished, they will be live updating. Mm. Like I said, this is like gonna be a bit of a, like an update video. It's a bit pro, a bit of con, something like that. Just like, the uh, kind of like an update video. So uh, the pros, it's a lot smoother, like going sideways, going up, going down, like the bouncy animations, you see this bit here, if I do that, the bounce back, like if you, if you open up like a film in here, just closing it and scrolling, finding another one, opening it, closing it, so that it's a lot, it's a lot smoother than what it was, uh, it's a lot stabler, there's not many crashes or there's not as Many crashed. I mean, so far I haven't had one, but I've only been running this for about an hour and a half. Probably not even that much. Um, but GSM networks are working, so you can call people. Um, I test it out with uh, one of my phones in the office here. Um, I would call it again, but actually, yeah, screw it, I'm going to call it again. There you go. So you can see. I'm gonna ignore that. Uh, you could answer it. You could ignore it, and it gives you uh, some other options in the drop-down menu. When which is the drop-down menu? I always keep forgetting to actually have a look in. But I'm guessing it's um, like reply with a text message or stuff like that. Um, and I said texts also work. So, but this is a weird bug. At least in this build, uh, there isn't an SMS app per se on uh, Ubuntu, so what you have to do is um, you drag down for on the messages and then you come into this part and this is kind of like your pseudo inbox but uh, to find all your threads and everything we do you go to the phone app uh, for if I go back right, this is like the first serious bug it doesn't want to go back um, here we go so we go into the dialer app to change to uh, SMS. So at the top where it says calls, just tap anywhere, and you get hints for the one. So next one would be conversations. One after that would be contacts, and then it goes back to calls again. And then this is uh, obviously I'm still going to cover up the other number. Um, I don't know if it's going to focus, but uh, obviously you just saw like messages here. Um, 
and these, these are just from Twitter. I don't mind. But I don't mind letting these ones go. Um, so that's obviously working. Multi-touch. Uh, Multi-touch now works. If I can find the gallery, here it is. I took a photo earlier of uh, a little speaker on my desk. Like it's not perfect, and the implementation's a bit janky. It doesn't always work, but you're seeing it here. You're you're kind of seeing it work. And obviously, uh, double tap to zoom still works. No, no. <laughs> Now I've got to try and zoom out again. Something that just definitely doesn't want to be done. There we go. Alright, again, gesture to go home. Uh, there are some more core apps that actually work. So, uh, the camera... The camera worked in the last build. Um, the front-facing camera is... Oh, now it's deciding to work. Um, a minute ago it was upside down. Uh, I don't know why, but the front facing camera was upside down. Uh, obviously the the normal camera is fine, you can just take photos. Uh -huh. See, look, I've managed to get it upside down again. I don't know how I did it, but and again it's back to normal. So we just swipe back to go home. Uh, now Obviously, this is kind of like the home pane. Uh, so you go, there's five panes. There's music, there's people, there's home, there's apps, and there's videos. If we go to the apps pane, now we have a running apps, and this gives you the card preview of all the other running apps, and it's kind of like um, how Mego did it on the Nokia N9. It's kind of like how uh, HTC does it on the, uh, the one, the multitasking menu there. Um, but closing them is similar, is more similar to Mego. You tap and hold, you get a red X in the corner, and you do that. Down below is your recently used apps. So camera, phone, gallery, Facebook, uh, browser, and Gmail. Uh, some installed ones, so like Amazon, uh, browser, calculator, calendar, camera, clock, uh, available for download. The ones available for download are still just, um, they're just like buttons that do nothing. Uh, things like the calculator is an actual app now. It's not just a um, a dummy, so that's that's a good one. Ooh, um, let's do some cons. Uh, there's still no actual SMS app. There's not like you can't like scroll down of your apps and find messaging. The only way to really get in there is to go to the phone, tap on the top, go to conversations, and that's too many steps to check your message. And I know, and I know you can do that, but that's not the same as having an actual messaging app. Um, there's still not a settings app. The closest thing to a settings app is when you, uh, sorry, is when you just tap on the top and you get this. It's like a kind of device menu. There's flight mode for toggle, uh, sound, you can do that, uh, message sound, networks, battery, date and time, and that basically just corresponds to one of those. If I jump to date and time, yeah, you see this, It's there's no different than if I just drag down from there. So, uh, next is customizability. Yeah, blah 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 blah. Uh, customizability. There really isn't any. Um, you can't change the background. You can't um, change your wallpaper on your lock screen. You can't like rearrange the apps. I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, all of this is coming later on. I'm just saying, like at this moment in time, there isn't. Um, doesn't bother me that much. I actually like the stock Ubuntu uh, color palette, so I like the purples and orangey type things. They're actually really nice. Um, I bet they'd look absolutely gorgeous on an AMOLED screen. This is just a uh, normal IPS. I mean, I've I've turned the brightness down for this video, but if I just uh, jack it right to the top, even like the purples on this and the oh, this glass is so smooth. Um, even the display on this phone, which isn't a bad display, I, I should say. Um, just, just going to turn it down for the camera. Um, so yeah, that's uh, last con. Uh, it's not really even a con, they're just like quirks that kind of need to be fixed. Um, is There's no haptic feedback on the keyboard. You've actually got to be looking where you're typing. Um, another kind of quirk is, it's not a quirk, it's kind of something to get used to. 
if you're using a Nexus 4 or a Galaxy Nexus or something which had virtual on-screen buttons, you're kind of used to the keyboard being shifted up a little bit further than uh, what it is. So you, you lose about this much of the screen. On something like this, so if I go back um, and I just start, it actually starts right at the bottom of the screen. So if I start where I usually would, um, where the spacebar would be is kind of where the C key is, that, that row of keys. So it's just a bit odd. Uh, so there are there are some gestures I really love about Ubuntu. Um, I guess some some quirks. Um, like I said the some cool things are the welcome screen. You can double tap to go through them. Uh, so soon enough they'll probably be like live. I mean, one of the ones that were first showing off was like you've got fourteen tweets, so that's kind of cool. Uh, what else? Uh, it's the the bleh. Some of the web browsing stuff is uh, kind of. I think it's the. I think it's called the user agent. It's not quite doing it right. So if you go to Facebook, for instance, it doesn't show up like you'd go like Android, like on an Android and iPhone. It looks like you're accessing Facebook from an old Nokia from the 1990s. It's I say 1990s, the early 2000s, where it's not touch optimized at all. And it's just kind of weird because in some of the older builds, it worked perfectly. Same as if I where's Twitter? It's over there. Um, Twitter is exactly the same. That's that's a bit of a bug. That's the first one I've seen. So bear with me on that, guys. If I can get this to load up Twitter, you'll see. Uh, what I mean as well. It looks see look, it looks like you're accessing Twitter from an old phone. So if you try and pull to refresh, it doesn't. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not the tripod. Um, another cool thing is they've added some cool like transitions. So if I just swipe back here, if I open up the um, menu, can you see the top apps here? Look, they are kind of like carousel, and then they they've squished at the bottom. Like things like that. Little attention to detail like that is really nice, and like the way it's slightly phased darker. That, the level of detail they've put into this in the amount of time is, oh, it's, it's absolutely mental. So I cannot wait until, um, I can't wait till this is finished. Uh, last quirk in which I have found in this build alone, um, if you've got a text message. So you saw one come through. You probably undoubtedly saw the little uh, SMS icon, just like blink for dear life. And if I tried to pull down on that, I would still have you have no outstanding messages. The only way to clear it is to go um, into the phone app. But that's like I said, that's probably just a bug with this particular build. I'll be trying some more out in the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. This is a bunch of developer preview for June fourteenth, and I have no problems. Um, I would have no problems replacing Android or at least door uh until this gets some more apps because this is just great. I mean there are certain things I use daily that I wouldn't be a, like um, be able to use this without. So I think I use things like Hangouts. I use things like Hangouts a lot, uh, WhatsApp, things like that. So unless these guys get ported, I use Skype a lot as well. So unless these things get ported, I probably won't be staying on it for very long. But I can't wait to see if slash when they do. Alright guys, you can get me on the website, which is www.mobile-dom.co.uk. You can get me on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash mobile underscore dom. You can circle me on Google+, Plus, which is gplus.to forward slash Domenico Lamberti. And if you want a consultation about a phone or a tablet or even an operating system, I can help you on that. And the email address for that is domenico at mobile-dom.co.uk. Until next time, guys, toodle pip.